lasting peace built on justice and understanding among nations. This is the objective of the United Nations. This is another program in the United Nations series of the Pacific Story, one of the five special series presented by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated stations to further world unity and world peace through understanding. For hundreds of years, the Pacific and the lands it touches have been the scene of struggle, conflict for gain and power, people against people, Western nations seeking to dominate and exploit the people, and the millions caught in the political and economic cross current. Today, with most of the world's population concentrated around and in the Pacific, the events of the Pacific are a vital world concern. The Pacific Story dedicates this series to the objective of the United Nations, lasting peace built on justice and understanding among nations. Cross currents in Malaya. you looked me up, Stan. How's everything back in the States? Well, Rod, it's not so hot. It's post-war reaction, I suppose. We're not pulling together as we were. Pressure blocks, everybody for himself. I'd say things are confused. <laughs> Wait till you've been in Malaya a while and you'll understand what confusion really means. So? Well, look, if I'm going to work here, I ought to know what's cooking. Suppose you're brief, Neil. Malaya is rich. Fabulously rich. You know, I came here before the war, engineer for a rubber company. Mm -hmm. Well, the night I arrived, I saw a funny thing. An old playboy sultan, his fingers loaded with diamonds, was right here in this nightclub having a high old time for himself. And in walks a British official. Uh, highness, uh, your highness, if you please, it's time to go home. I am entertaining my friends. Do not bother me. Oh, but you know, highness, you must leave any cafe in Singapore by 10 o'clock. It's for your own good, you know. I am not going. Carry on, sergeant. Uh, Pick him up, men. That's the ticket. Easy now with his eyes. Let me go. This is outrageous. Carry him out. Easy now. Careful with his eyes. You will hear from me. Do not forget it. You will hear it. Rod, I thought the labor government had changed that kind of British policy. I understand Britain is trying to unravel our colonial empire. You're right. But so far as Malaya is concerned, these efforts have only resulted in a worse tangle. The nine sultans, all autocrats, are denouncing the British for imperialism. The pot calling the kettle black? Maybe. Anyway, Britain's been working on a scheme for Malay Federation. It's an effort to explore the possibility of Malayan self-government. Now, last October, Sir Harold McMichael, an ardent Tory, by the way, came out to sell the idea to the sultans. But the sultans had their own ideas. This is an ultimatum. If I refuse to sign this instrument of surrender... Britain will appoint a successor who will sign. The Sultan of Kedah is right. It is an ultimatum. The same kind they used to hand me. If I didn't go home at 10 o'clock, they carried me out. For my own good. This strips us of everything, except our authority as Muslim religious leaders. I am going to London to protest in person. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree with the Sultans. They were here before the British, weren't they? Yeah, but remember, before the British came, the Sultans had the power of life and death. If a Sultan didn't like uh, the way you tied your tie, for instance, your head rolled on the grass. Mm. But, Rod, didn't the Atlantic Charter guarantee every country the right to choose its rulers? Why don't the British get out and let the Malays set up a democratic government of their own? <laughs> that sounds easy, but it isn't. There are plenty of native Malays who think democracy would be the worst thing that could happen to them. I don't get that at all. 
Well, to begin with, there are roughly two million Malays in the peninsula. There are more than two million Chinese, what we call the overseas Chinese. Ambitious people who left home to get rich. Reminds me of the European immigrants who came to America. Yes, exactly. And like them, the overseas Chinese send a lot of money back home. But eventually, we assimilate our immigrants. How long have the Chinese been here? A long time. And they're not assimilated yet. The Chinese are shrewd traders. The easygoing Malays are no match for them. Some of your produce is overripe. We expected you two days ago, Honorable Lee. Six dollars for the pile. Six dollars? For the work of a whole village? We'll not take it. The next trader will give us a better offer. <laughs> no other trader will come to your village. This is my territory. I have a monopoly. Monopoly? I don't understand. Never mind. The price is six dollars. Or do you prefer to let your produce rot? We'll take it. All right. Get it unloaded. <laughs> The Malays have a saying. The Chinese don't care who holds the cow as long as they milk her. <laughs> Let's see where they get that, all right. And the proverbs become truer as time went on. Prosperity increased under British protection. Roads were built, cities swelled in population. But the political situation got more involved. It all adds up to ten separate governments in a country the, the size of, of Florida. Mm. Beginning to understand what you mean by confusion. Oh, but wait. On top of this, something else happened to mess things up worse than ever in Malaya. The automobile. The world on wheels. And the wheels needed tires. Rubber tires. Malaya had the rubber. It didn't have the labor. You see... The Malays are peasant proprietors, and the majority don't take well to the industrialization of hiring out on the rubber plantations. Oh, dirt farmers, eh? Old-fashioned dirt farmers. Obviously, they couldn't supply the labor for this new industry created almost overnight, designed to supply a world market. So, Britain imported thousands of Tamil coolies from India and injected them into the already scrambled population. More Chinese came in to work the tin mines, which had been opened up as another source of wealth for the white man. Then, thousands of English-speaking Indonesians and Chinese clerks were hurried from the straight settlements into the jungles of the interior to handle the paperwork. The bewildered Malays watched from the sidelines. Yeah, this path gets harder every day. Look, look, an open space as wide as a river. It is a road, Ong. The white man had cut another road through the jungle. You're right, Pashai. Come, we'll take the road and travel faster. Look out! Look out for the trucks! Pashai, did you see those strange-looking men? Going like flying demons. Who are they all? Foreigners. A whole army of them. The Chinese are foreigners, too, but these men are different. I know. The white men are bringing them here to work on the big rubber plantation. If the white men have to bring foreigners to our country... There should be work for us, too. I am going to see. I don't like that kind of work. My farm is good enough for me. Then I will go alone. I wish to learn from the white man. What do you want here? Oh, who are you? Wrong yet. I am in charge here. Why, you speak Malay, but you are Chinese. Well? My name is Pashan. I want to work for the white man, too. We do not need you. But the white men brought these foreigners. They are Tamils from India. All one people. There are not enough of you Malays to count, so we do not bother with you. But will you not let me talk to the white Tuan? He is busy. Even the Malays who wanted to get into the new industries, rubber, tin, construction, were denied an opportunity. Between the Malays and the European engineer stood a phalanx of clerks and foremen and inspectors. Chinese, Indian, Eurasian. Then, in the trades, in business or industry, they must have faced a Chinese boycott. Well, I think the colonial government would have tried to remedy that situation. Well, it did try. 
1936, Britain decentralized the federated Malay states in the interest of Malayan cooperation, appointed a federal secretary, concentrated departmental advisors at the two capitals, Singapore and Kuala Lumpur. Oh. It uh, didn't work? No, it didn't work. Because now states' rights predominated. The states were becoming independent little kingdoms again. Well, at least they have native administrators. It merely strengthened the hand of the overseas Chinese. Their monopolies ignored boundaries and thrived on state rivalries. By this time, Chinese operations had become so interlocked and so racially exclusive, their labor reservoirs so boundless, that it was too late to give the natives a new deal. Too bad the Malays don't have more aptitude for industry and commerce. Then they might have a chance in competition with the Chinese. It isn't exactly the Malays' fault. We've got to remember that for 2,000 years, both Chinese and Indians have done their best to keep them out of commerce and industry. This way, you men. See those crowds? Your job is to repair them. I've just been waiting for some good mechanics. Here, here, here. What's the matter here? The men cannot work on these carts. Why not? Perhaps you do not understand. You are Hindu. What does that have to do with it? You have used these carts to haul night soil. We Malays are Muslims. To touch them with the filer. Then you refuse to do the job? I am sorry. We want the work. Is there not something else we could... Nothing else. I'll report that you refuse the assignment. Oh. Oh. Then, when the British government was helping the Malay fishermen to oust the middleman and retail his catch... Tie up here, Ram Spoon. I'll go ashore. There's the ice factory right across the street. Chinese, like everything else in this town. Well, we have a good day's catch. We must get these fish eyes. Fifty pounds of ice. What for? Do I have to tell you what for? You do, if you get it. We have a sampan load of fish at the wharf. No ice. Why not? I'll pay in cash. Ice for fish goes to Wasi. Oh, I see. You and your friend who sells fish wholesale. Another Chinese family party. And when British officials tried to force Malay labor on Chinese contractors in Keda. I say, Ming, right here. Stop quick, yes, sir. I don't understand this, Ming. You haven't even broken ground in your construction job. Labor trouble, very bad. Do you have a strike? Oh, no, not strike. Malay, no good. Won't work like China Cooley. Mm-hmm. Now, see here, Ming. This is a government job. You accepted the contract. You know it stipulated one-third Malay labor. Yes, too bad. China Cooley won't work with Malay. Very well. You win, confound it. Now, the government has authorized me to boost the contract price 10%. Now, get at it, will you? You're way behind schedule. I'm sorry. The Chinese will not work with the Malays. There is always trouble. The Malays fight the Chinese. Will you tell the government? I'll tell them. Oh, the Lord only knows where this will end. Yes, things were coming to a head. It was hard to tell where it all might end. The British were trying one scheme after another. And they might have affected some sort of compromise among the different racial groups. But the Japanese Empire decided it was ready to take over the leadership of Asia from the white man. United States fleet at Pearl Harbor destroyed. British battleships report on the Prince of Wales sunk. Great British fortress of Singapore taken. And the little brown men moved in to establish the East Asia co-prosperity sphere. I'd say this part of Asia was ripe for picking. Well, the Japanese exploited the situation here, all right. 
They played off the melees against the Chinese. But if there's anything that uh, will unify diverse elements in a population, it's a foreign enemy. Yeah. Even saw that happen in America. Well, I saw it happen here. I was in a concentration camp, and in spite of Japanese propaganda against the Anglo-Americans, the underground anti-Japanese union was formed. The guerrilla forces, under its direction, were known as the anti-Japanese army. Chinese proved good guerrilla fighters, and many Malays fought beside them. Oh, Ling, Ling, where are you? They're coming, the Japanese column, along the upper road. Our band on the ridge is sniping at them. Wait, Sarah. Wait till they reach the bridge. Ling, what's this? A wire. You've mined the bridge. With dynamite. Where did you get dynamite? My father's store. Quiet. They're closer now. Listen. I can hear their lorries along the mountain road. Look over the rocks, Sarah. What can you see? Two lorries. Three lorries. Four. They're on the bridge. Now. Let me look again. You've blown the bridge, Ling. The column is stopped. They'll have to go back. Ling, they're swarming up the mountain. Come on, run. Ling, are you hit? Uh, my shoulder. I, I, I don't think it's bad. The blood. Here. Yeah. Wrap this around it. Hold it on tight. Thank you. Come on. I know this country like my father's rice fields. I'll hide you. In here, Ling. Behind the waterfall. There's a rice You're safe here. Now, your shoulder. Uh, it doesn't hurt very much. Sarah. Sarah, do you think the Americans and British can beat the Japanese? Of course they can. But why don't they come? They will. They're getting ready to invade Malaya. I heard it from our new commander, the British officer they dropped by parachute. I hope it is soon. Things will be so different then. I don't mean we'll just have more to eat and won't have to leave like wild pigs in the jungles. I know what you mean, Sarah. That Malaya will be a finer country to live in. It will be united. Yes, because of what we've all gone through together. Here am I, Sarah, son of Pashyang, a Malay rice farmer. And I, Wong Ling, son of Wong Yet, a Chinese merchant. I would give my life if it would save you, Ling. And I would do the same for you, Sarah. That's what comradeship is. I want to see the same thing you do. Comradeship, democracy, a united people throughout Malaya. We'll work together for that. Yes, we will. The Allies were ready to invade the peninsula when Japan surrendered. And immediately the issues held in abeyance were precipitated. The unity that had developed during the war was shot to pieces. Japanese propaganda must have really left a hangover. A bad one. The ethnic pressure groups began to form ranks again. The anti-Japanese union split up into people's political associations or self-help societies. They were mainly Chinese. Rod, tell me, which of the Chinese political factions dominates in Malaya? Well, the Kuomintang is beginning to organize again in the cities, and there's a Chinese youth movement. But the radical societies are by far the most active and uh, the loudest talkers. We are many different peoples here. Malaya is the melting pot of Asia. We can be strong and prosperous only if we unite. What about us, the Sakai? You too. Oh, no, not the Sakai. They are aborigines or negritos. Darker skin makes no difference. Malaya must unite for the common good. 
unite and share as equals. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Here, here's an old comrade of mine. His name is Sirah. We fought the Japanese together. Come forward, Sirah. Up here, old comrade. Tell these people what the Liberal Party is doing for Malaya. The Liberal Party is a mask for Chinese greed. Sirah, you're wrong. There's only one cause to rally to today. Nationalism. Run the foreigners out. Malaya for the Malay. You've changed, Sirah. Remember what we... I've had cause to change. I found out what's behind the mask you Chinese wear. You're plotting our enslavement. The economic enslavement of the Malay race. Wait, you, you're wrong, sir. So wrong. You're wrong? I'm wrong. You stand there leaning and tell me that I'm wrong? When my own father, Pashan, had to mortgage his rice field? I didn't know this, sir. Who holds the mortgage? Who, indeed? Who but the Gambian man of our town? The fat Chinese merchant Wong Yet, your father... Wang Yet shall never have my rice fields. He has pushed me too far. All my life I have slaved and gone without to eat, so his kind could grow fat. If you had understood earlier, my father, if you had gone to school to the white man, you might be a match for Wang Yet. I tried that when I was young. I wished to learn the white man's skills. I went to the big rubber plantation across the river and asked for work. The white Tuan would not take you? I never saw the white Tuan. A Chinese clerk ordered me off the place. His name was Wang Yet. Father. Father, you cannot take Pashang's farm. He will not be able to make a living. Then Pashang should not have borrowed money he could not pay back. He should not have been compelled to borrow it. So you defy your father. You degrade the most precious heritage of our race. Respect for your parents. You make your bed with swine. Father, I didn't mean I that... I am not your father. You are not longer a son of mine. Then I will no longer act like a son of yours. And the more radical elements are gaining strength in Malaya. Well, it certainly doesn't look as if the British Labor government favored them in the home island. What is it doing here? Well, here it's a different proposition. British colonial policy has been under fire for years. As you said yourself a while ago, Britain is now trying to unravel the skein of her colonial empire. Well, I don't think she can swing her colonies by the tail anymore. Well, at any rate, she's leaning over backward here. The policy of the British military administration in Malaya is to permit the utmost possible in free association, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and non-interference with the program of any political party. You have been called together, gentlemen, as an advisory council to His Majesty's government. You, sir, what party do you represent? I am a member of the Kuomintang. I favor the same democratic policy in Malaya that Chiang Kai-shek supports in China. And uh, you, sir? Chiang Kai-shek is a tool. I am for democracy, too, but not the kind you are supporting in China. <laughs> next, next, you, sir. I represent the Malay National Party. These, are, these men are quarreling over which Chinese faction is going to rule Malaya. What about the Malays? Between the Chinese and the Indians, we're far outnumbered in voting strength. Our Malay friend has stated it very well. In a mixed population, voting should be by racial groups. That system has worked in India, in Burma. No, you Chinese have combined to shoulder us out of commerce. Now you cheat us, cheat us out of a share in the government of our own country. We Malays will never consent. Well, what is your recommendation then? Retain administration of the Malay state. In Malay hands. The Sultan, you might as well be under the heel of the Japanese. Malay People's Party protests against high administrative posts passing into the hands of the Chinese. The Chinese are just as loyal to Malaya as you are. I was born here. What success I gain in business, I owe to Malaya. Yes, milking the cow while we hold her for you. Gentlemen, gentlemen, will you please come to order? 
Majesty's government has a plan. This is a statement issued yesterday by the Secretary of State for the Colonies. Quote, We have given careful consideration to the need to promote the sense of unity which will develop Malaya's strength and capacity in due course for self-government within the British Commonwealth. Unquote. I won't get What are you doing here? I want to hear the Secretary for the Colonies. Listen. Our policy will call for a constitutional union of Malaya and for equal citizenship rights to those who can claim Malaya as their home. Uh, I do not want Malayan citizenship. I'm a citizen of India. I don't trust the British to look out for the Malays when we are outnumbered. You are outnumbered. There are only 30,000 of us Sakais. Who's going to look out for us? The Malaya Union will consist of nine states in the Malaya Peninsula and the two British settlements of Penang and Malacca. The settlement of Singapore will be constituted as a separate colony. A separate colony? That's fine for you, Wong Yet. Singapore is 80% Chinese. But the British are retaining you, Malay sultans in the peninsula. I doubt they will let the Chinese vote. You don't need to vote. You hold the money back. Out of the way. Out of the way. I am looking for... Oh, there you are, Wong Yet. Sashang, what do you want? My rice fields, Wong Yet. The fields you took... You're crazy. This Chris is sharp, Wong Yet. You will rob no more on the stop him, stop him, help. Oh, help. I did, I did. None of that now. I'll take that sticker now. Break it up, everybody. Yeah, Listen to the speaker peaceful like. None must rely upon past privilege or regard Malaya simply as a source of material wealth. Her resources should be restored and developed. But it is only right that the Malayan people should be assured their full share in the rewards of their industry and feel the country's wealth reflected in their standard of life. Malaya needs British guidance. Malaya for the Malays. The Chinese insist on their rights. We demand a more liberal government. Good heavens, Rod. Jealousy, distrust, confusion. What can be done about it? Well... The British have announced their intention of guiding Malaya toward the goal of self-government. The Union is only a preparation for democracy, a training course. After this Union is achieved, will come the big problem, that of devising a democratic representative system which will work without splitting the country into a dozen hostile factions. Can this be done? The future will tell. have been listening to the Pacific Story, presented by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations to clarify events in the Pacific and to make understandable the cross-currents of life in the Pacific Basin. For a reprint of this Pacific Story program, send 10 cents in stamps or coin to University of California Press, Berkeley, California. May I repeat, for a reprint of this Pacific Story program, send 10 cents in stamps or coin the University of California Press, Berkeley, California. The Pacific Story is produced and directed by Arnold Marquis. The original musical score was composed and conducted by Thomas Peluso. The principal voice was that of William Johnstone. Programs in this series of particular interest to servicemen and women are broadcast overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.